Okay, so for the first real video on this channel, I've decided to address a question that I've been receiving for a pretty long time now, basically since I started this channel, and that's how do you get started or how can someone get started in amateur chemistry and to do something like what I'm doing? And my answer to this is pretty simple. Uh, some people might consider it a lame and, you know, not very helpful answer, but I think it is the reality of things. You just have to choose a project and do it. There, there's really not much else to it. You see something that you want to do, you buy the chemicals and equipment that you need to do it, and then you do it. And then if you do that many times with many different types of projects, you eventually build up this whole array of glassware, chemicals, equipment, etc., and experience. And I mean, that's kind of just it. And it goes like that for a lot of other things. You can't just prepare and, you know, try to get to level 50 when you haven't even gotten to level one yet. You have to just progress slowly and eventually you'll make it there. I get a lot of questions like this where people want to know, they're like, I'll have $2,000. I can just, what should I buy? I don't even have an answer for that. You just buy what you need and do it. If your project's $2,000, then go ahead. But it's kind of like an expensive, Thing to start with. But with that being said, I there is one other thing that I wanted to talk about and it's I'm I've always I'm answering this question to help people out for them to get started, but I've always I've always kind of been a bit uncomfortable encouraging people to do chemistry on their own because I don't necessarily make it that clear in my videos, but it's a very dangerous thing to do. If you don't know what you're doing, you can make a lot of mistakes where you can either hurt yourself or other people. And it's something that you really have to take into consideration. And I don't, in my videos, I don't want to be a drag and, you know, hammer in all these negative things and dangers about chemistry, but that is kind of the reality of it. Uh, when you decide to do a hobby like chemistry, it's dangerous. It involves toxic chemicals, corrosive chemicals. And, you know, if you have gases, those are, really bad and you can also have fires and these are all things to take into consideration. So it's, I really, I'm at this weird place where I really do want to encourage people to experiment on their own. It's something that I did since I was probably like eight or 10 and it's what led me to where I am now. And I know other people who have done stuff like that and it's been, you know, more or less safe, more or less over the, over the years, but I do, worry about the whole idea of encouraging people to try stuff on their own. Um, so I think that what I'll say is if you do want to try any chemistry on your own, definitely don't do anything like sulfuric acid distilling, mercury distilling, making things like acrolein. Those are all really things that I would never recommend. I think my best recommendation is to just is to start with something very simple and safe and to work your way up until you have the experience and the facilities to conduct experiments safely and responsibly. Because if you start out by just buying distillation stuff and then distilling sulfuric acid in your kitchen, it's, it's a horrible idea and you're probably going to end up getting, you know, really hurt or hurting someone else. So it's something that you just start very small, just by a few chemicals or a couple chemicals, a few pieces of equipment, and uh, just do a couple cool things. And if you are interested in it, you'll keep learning more and more and build up your inventory. And eventually you'll get to where you want to be. And that's basically it. There's not too much else to say about it.